Um, at this moment, may I invite uh, Dr. Sumed Yamnun to proceed for the official opening of the EDUCA 2011 trade exhibition in front of the exhibition hall. And we shall also proceed with the next session uh, straight away. Um, in the next session, we shall be uh, taking a look at top countries of PISA result 2009 and Thailand under the second theme of curriculum and instruction reform. So before we invite the speakers onto the stage, all full of them, may I just take this opportunity while they're just arranging the, the stage to introduce them, um, their curriculum. Um, first of all, uh, we shall hear from Professor Dr. Jergi Loimer. He's Administrative Principal of the Wiki Teacher Training School, University of Helsinki, adjunct professor of University of Helsinki. He holds the position at the Administrative Principal of the Wiki Teacher Training School, University of Helsinki from 2002 and to present time. And Dr. Jerky Loima is also an adjunct professor at the University of Helsinki and the University Eastern Finland. He provides consultancies in educational issues in China, USA and America. He is an experienced teacher education management and leadership both in Finland and international contexts. He is also listed in Marquis Who is Who in the World 2011, and his recent awards are 2000 Outstanding Intellectuals of the 21st Century. Uh, this is from the Oxford University Press, and the 1000 Great Persons of the 21st Century to be printed uh, by the American Biographical Center. And um, he will be talking to us on uh, the issue of the uh, on the issue of the um, the top countries of PISA Resort 2009 in Thailand. And uh, after that, we we'll shall hear from um, two persons who come from the same institution. Um, that is Madame Julie Ho. She is principal of the Raffles Girls School in Singapore. Um, Madame Ho took her first degree on a teaching scholarship from the Ministry of Education in Singapore and majored in classics and English at Reading University in the United Kingdom in 1988. She completed her diploma in education at the Institute of Education Singapore in 1989 and the year 2000 she graduated with a Master's in Education in Human Development and Psychology from Harvard University and again on a scholarship from the Ministry. Um, Madame Ho has served in education in a variety of different positions, both in school and Ministry of Education settings. She was closely involved in education and curriculum for the gifted and talented and served a stint in Raffles Girls School as head of the department of the gifted education program. Um, in the year 2007, Madame Ho was appointed principal of Raffle Girls School, the premier independent girls school in Singapore, which admits high ability girls from amongst the top 3% of Singapore's primary schools. And uh, the other lady who will be joining her for that particular uh, part of the program is Mrs. Mary Sherian. She is the director of the pedagogical research lab of the Raffles Girls School Secondary of Singapore. She graduated from the National University of Singapore with Bachelor of Arts with honors on a teaching scholarship from the Public Service Commission Singapore. She majored in history and English literature with a minor in English language. She then achieved a diploma in education from the National Institute of Education focusing on the teaching of history and English. And in the year 2010, she graduated from the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy with a master's in public administration, this time on a scholarship from the Raffles Girls Secondary School. Mrs. Cherian has extensive experience in gifted education principles and practices. And the last person who will be in this session um, is Associate Professor Dr. Kun Ying Sumontha Prombun. She is a member of the Higher Education Commission, the Ministry of Education, member of the board of the Institute for the promotion of teaching science and technology. Previously, she was president of C. Nakarin Virod University from the year 1997 to 2003, and she received many awards, for example, honorary doctoral degrees in educational administration from C. Nakarin Virod University and biotechnology from King Mongkut Institute of Technology, Lakrabang. So uh, to start off with, uh, we shall hear 
from Professor Dr. Jerky Loima, Administrative Principal, the Wiki Teacher Training School, University of Helsinki, Finland, who will present his view on curriculum development, learning, and the 21st century skills. Professor Dr. Jerky Loima. Good morning, everyone. First of all, I I'd like to thank the organizing committee and all the stakeholders that have made it possible to be here. And I also had an opportunity to facilitate and run an in-service training program with 70, 77 Thai teachers prior to this. And I found my colleagues in this country to be fast-track learners and and, and very hard working teachers and there was something I learned about them the, the happiness of learning yes something about learning and curriculum development and 21st century skills like this we are familiar with this piece of research and this is just a brief introduction to what I'm going to talk about. And for us, and according to our understanding, PISA is not a competition at all, but PISA rather is cooperation. It's an invitation to cooperate on the, fields of, on the field of education. International research requires international cooperation. How about the education and learning beyond the PISA, in front of PISA, behind the PISA? How about the results and research? Uh, first of all, we should make a decision whether or not we want to have a common educational system for all. Second, should it, be, should it be wide as a compulsory educational? Should it be short? Should it be closed and include only talented students and thus get the best perform, firm, performance out of the nation and in a way close it from the others? Should there be narrow pathways or could it be a highway with no dead ends? When it comes to education, we have such questions to ask. As well as this, what goals or objectives uh, our national or, or other education has in terms of learning and on the other hand, in terms on, of teaching. And one more point of view to add to this is that are we at school for learning or are we there for teaching? Uh, Sir Michael already said something about copy and past methodologies. You can't transfer from another country to another country any model as such but we could build by cooperation bridges and highways of education and as it comes to the attitudes we are dealing with is it rather that we have more supervisors more school more school inspectors more tests more control more formal control in our learning institutions or could it be that way that we are encouraging people to think in a different way, in an innovative way, and learn to trust each other? I can't help to uh, say something about those clusters that, that were mentioned in the previous presentations. We, in our country, we are talking about networks where there are private companies, uh, learning institutions from various levels, different kind of schools, multicultural people, learning with, 
with and from each other. Trusting and learning to trust, encouraging each other to have a more sustainable way to develop oneself in a group, in a team. For three, third factor is um, how can we foster social or individual motivation and learn to respect each other and what are the needs of education? Sir Michael said that said something about a good leader at school and I would name it in one word. A good le school leader is a facilitator. He or she makes th things to happen possible. Then it comes to the society itself. Are we living in a static society where people know beforehand in their early childhood how their life is going to be in the near future and finally as an adult? Or do we live in a dynamic process where you have opportunities and possibilities to educate yourself, have career alternatives, have international contacts and uh, I would say that the static phase of societies has been passing away during the last 50 years. Uh, what kind of assessment do we need when we do evaluation? And one more thing about this PISA. It means for us that we are not competing with other nations, but the results gave us an understanding of the trusted education system we have created during the latest 25 years, and, and teachers are trusted and respected experts on the field of, in the field of education. And we do a lot of teacher education evaluation and, for example, Helsinki University has teacher education high in its strategy. Curriculum development in, in common. We have a variety of questions to be solved when we are dealing with curriculum development. First, a crucial question. Do we have to have a curriculum which has a number of detailed instructions like it was in the previous century? Give your pupils a pencil two times a year was in our curriculum 30 years ago, 35 years ago. Or uh, is it enough just to mention core elements and subjects and skills or competencies beyond the subjects that are covering like an umbrella all the curriculum. Second, who then updates the curriculum? Uh, who owns the rights for changes in curriculum? Does it come from the local activities and school-based performance or is it monitored elsewhere? How about the quality and evaluation of our teaching, interaction and learning? Are we having solid networks? For me, this conference is a good example of your networking system. As I saw the organizers, as I saw the, all, the, all the network working for this important happening you are having here. This one is hard. And many countries have alternative solutions for this. Uh, I take an example from the United States. They are increasing the number of tests. So their students have a lot of pressure of the soon coming te test. And when the test is over, they activate their brains to forget as much as possible to get ready for the next test. 
or are we learning for the school and are we doing such formal operations in everyday school life that we can go through the education without a dropout or are we learning for life or are we which is in my thinking the most crucial way of learning are we learning how to learn and if we are doing this we are learning for the lifetime with and without institutions and I would say learning for for a lifetime and, and learning skills how to learn are individual but they are created in teams in social networks ah, as the nature of the curriculum is it a book somewhere nobody touches or is it in the brains or even in the mind of a teacher or could it be an innovative manual that encourages teachers for individual didactical or pedagogical solutions? Could it be a manual of best available and yet unknown practices as well? Could it make teachers' life more easy? Could it motivate teachers? And finally, how much is needed uh, about the content knowledge, I would say, Sir, Ma Sir Michael already described the growing numbers of the information. We shouldn't be worried about knowing enough content knowledge today because a day after tomorrow, we in that case should be updating our knowledge from today. So knowledge gets old increasingly faster ways and, and the skills to get knowledge are more important. And nowadays we, nowadays we must talk about global education and local education. Without global education there is no global education. And what is the best way to activate teachers to participate in the curriculum development and what then is the best way to educate them to have such competencies or skills that they may create better curriculum for example for the first school years I take an example of a de decentralized case of building a curriculum in Finland we have a national core curriculum which is a loose document. It gives descriptions of good knowledge and skills for each subject and metacognitions in the sense of wider understanding. And it's given the schools by National Board of Education. But it's only a loose framework. Local actors Educational organizers, for example, Helsinki City, any other municipality, in our case, Helsinki University and Viki Teacher Training School, then have their own curriculum, which has those core elements of a national level. But it's localized, and every teacher is participating actively in creating this curriculum for maybe two years and third and finally it's localized to a single school and we have school-based curricula throughout our country so in addition to those core elements that are taken from the national level and in addition to those taken from the local level each school may have a own profile, making thus a difference from the others. We even had a parachuting upper secondary school for a while.
And this is done in cooperation with the stakeholders like parents and children and students. They participate in making a school level curriculum. And this process approximately takes three to four years and when it's finished and accepted, we actually test it for a year and then, then we start another preparations for the next curriculum. So every fourth, every fifth year we have a new curriculum and in that way we are trying to face the challenges that change in society and information is giving us every day. A few words about learning and how do we understand it or how do we share it. First of all, we learn at schools and outside the schools as well. And how much of that learning should be formalized uh, into a so-called formal education and I mean here the compulsory education. And then we have to think about what is more important, formal learning, instructive ways of learning or informal, more innovative learning. We'll come to that later on. And uh, I'll put again here lifelong learning, which is widely accepted as a needed competence uh, on the 21st century, answering those rapid changes we are facing. As it comes to the nature of knowledge, uh, I would say that less information is needed to know by heart more innovation, critical thinking and adaptation skills are inevitable in everyday virtual environments we are dealing with as well as in social life. We meet different people, they have different ways of thinking, they have different mindsets. We learn something, sometimes it's more useful, sometimes it's not so useful yet. How can we clarify the focus of learning? We should pay serious attention to learning to learn skills and competencies that make it possible to change our own ideas of uh, myself, my working environment, what is innovation actually. Uh, about extraordinary new global challenges. No should not be the first word we are saying when we are facing something new, but a curiosity rather would be more fruitful attitude. Urge to learn. And I would rise learning to a higher level to global togetherness in global questions like your unfortunate flood is. It's not only a local phenomenon, it's, it's a global challenge. And those are beyond the nation states as Sir Michael already said. We need to cooperate and learn for those circumstances and situations. And I think this, is, this was beforehand my most important part of presentation. We were talking about this in that in service training course I had before this conference. And uh, I would name this list that is made by Scott McLeod, Iowa State University, US. There are other lists as well, but they are quite similar. What are the crucial skills that should be adapted in our educational institutions for this century? Global awareness of being a member of human society. 
with its, with its, its responsibilities, critical thinking, not maybe from the neighbor or the next door people, but critical thinking in relation with this information flow we are facing, creativity, adaptability, collaboration, curiosity, and innovation are the skills that should be amalgamated to every subject teaching and learning methodologies. And these are meta skills, these are beyond the normal. Effective speaking and writing, we all share that vision, I, I dare to say. Media fluency, when you have more and more information, you have to take only the crucial ones for you, not everything. It is even not possible. And thus, do your problem solving, problem solving skills a big favor in the same time. Entrepreneurialism means that we are, we are not a company actually, or we are necessarily not doing business, but we are trying. We are putting our best efforts and trying to learn. Analytical skills, uh, capacity to make synthesis of different kind of phenomena coming from these different directions. These are the skills that could and should be taken to every curriculum we have in order to face the future challenges in a creative way. In Thailand you have a long, firm cultural history which is worth respecting. It's a good bottom to start with and think these ideas. How could these skills be, be adapted? For example, Thailand education. And this is a global question. We are not dealing with it only in, in Helsinki University or, or here. It's everywhere the same. These kind of skills are needed. And why then? MacLeod said that the digital information has broken the barriers and location of work and information goes faster than we do. And our advanced students find information in a more faster way from their virtual sources than we open in a book, even in the same space. And ideas thus crisscross the world at, at amazing speeds. And work moves to a place where is it more cheap to be done, for example. And in this case, education is competition. We should create opportunities to keep something and even, even more of the globalized work there where we live. And there should be a reason to pay a good salary for a worker who has that kind of skills that promote the ideas of the company, whatever it is, where he or she is working. And why more? Actually, in this terminal change in our world, we have no more space of thinking Western cultures and Eastern cultures. It would rather be us as human beings, as a huge society that is covering all the globe and understand learning and the skills that are crucial for learning and be able to adapt them to all kind of networks, uh, to all and every situation we are. And it involves a lot of 
curiosity, motivation. And I was talking about self-leadership some time ago. And by self-leadership, I mean, mean that after a day has been, or after the day is over, I ask myself, did I, did I have my best input here? Did I do my best? Or if I didn't, why I didn't? To conclude in a very brief manner, those topics, curriculum development as a whole process with different kind of solutions, learning and its ubiquity, and those mentioned 21st century skills. They are three different phenomena which have a mixed and crucial and also constantly changing interaction in all learning processes we are dealing with, in all performances, we are more or less consciously involved. So in brief, that was my presentation. And thank you. I think we have a couple of minutes for questions, if there are. Mr. Cruz, as Rajan Jerky got a put in Rung Kong, หลายเรื่องในกันโดยเฉพาะเรื่องของหลักสูตรนะครับพูดถึงการที่การจะพัฒนาหลักสูตรในแต่ละแห่งนั้นจะเป็นอย่างไรนะครับดังท่านได้ยกตัวอย่างในกรณีของฟินแลนด์ก็มีทั้งการนําเอาองค์ประกอบในระดับชาติมาร่วมกับองค์ประกอบในระดับท้องถิ่นนะครับออกมาเป็นหลักสูตรซึ่งได้มีการร่วมมือของหลายๆฝ่ายทั้งครูเองนะครับทั้งในส่วนของผู้ปกครองเองก็เข้ามาเป็นส่วนร่วมแล้วก็นําเอาหลักสูตรนั้นไปทดลองใช้1ปีแล้วก็เตรียมการสําหรับการพัฒนาหลักสูตรในระดับต่อไปซึ่งก็จะมีการพัฒนาหลักสูตรกันทุกๆ4ถึง5ปีหลักสูตรใหม่ออกมาอย่างต่อเนื่องแล้วท่านก็ได้พูดถึงเรื่องของทักษะที่เหมาะสมสำหรับศตวรรษที่21อีกด้วยนะครับก็มีหลายทักษะด้วยกันทั้งเรื่องของความรอบรู้ในเรื่องของความเป็นไปในโลกเรื่องของ critical thinking เรื่องของการที่จะมีแนวคิดสร้างสรรค์เรื่องการปรับตัวให้เข้ากับสิ่งรอบด้านที่เกิดขึ้นคนรอบข้างที่เข้ามาเรื่องของการมีปฏิสัมพันธ์ความอยากรู้อยากเห็นนะครับเรื่องของนวัตกรรมใหม่ๆแล้วก็รวมไปถึงการที่เราสามารถที่จะรับรู้ข้อมูลข่าวสารแล้วก็เข้าใจมันได้แล้วก็สังเคราะห์มันได้วิเคราะห์มันได้ในเชิงวิพากษ์วิจารณ์ด้วยนะครับเป็นทักษะที่จะต้องเกิดขึ้นในศตวรรษที่21มีคําถามไหมครับถ้าไม่มีก็จะได้ไปสู่ท่านผู้บรรยายท่านต่อไปนะครับ Thank you very much professor I think for your talk